This is David Kurtz for TPM Media. We're joined today by Simon Johnson, who's on the uh, faculty of Sloan School of Management at MIT and also former chief economist for the International Monetary Fund. Uh, thank you for joining us today, Simon. My pleasure. I, I was noticing one of your blog posts uh, at TPM Cafe where you talked about one of the things that's key in resolving financial crises in those, in those countries is to essentially change the dynamic that the elite there had created that caused the crisis in the first place, and that you didn't feel like the U.S. or Western countries generally, perhaps, had yet gone through that phase in working our way through the financial crisis. Can you expand a little bit on on how you've seen that play out in developing countries and and where you see us being at this point in this crisis? Absolutely. And I'm I'm really struck and, and maybe even still surprised by the parallels. But what you see in, in a lot of uh, developing country situations is there's an elite that does very well in a boom. Maybe they're in finance or perhaps they're in some sort of manufacturing. Maybe some of the things they do initially are sensible, but it, it all gets excessive. There's overborrowing. Uh, maybe they control the banks. They capture the banks. That's, that's pretty typical. And, and then you have a crisis and the crisis can take the form of a banking crisis and maybe the currency collapses. And other things, other things are going on. The key to, to stabilizing that situation, to turning things around and to getting growth back is, is without exception, uh, breaking the power of that elite. Now, uh, you don't get miracles. They don't go away. Uh, they reconfigure. They, they come back in, in some other form, of course. But I, I am really struck by the fact that in the United States, we both have this financial sector, this very powerful uh, core of big banks that got us into a massive amount of trouble. And we've done almost nothing, really to undermine the power of the people who control those banks. So it, it's really um, a, a striking parallel. I, I know some people will be offended, but I'm calling it the oligarchs. The American oligarchs are, are really still very strong in, in this situation. And I think unless and until you break the power of that group, at least partially, and it's very tough, I'll be honest, very tough, but unless you, you, and until you break them, you're not going to get out of this crisis properly. One of the parallels that's been drawn frequently is to the lost decade in Japan in the 90s. Was there a point there where, where that sort of oligarch breaking reform ultimately took place? Or, or was it the failure of such a thing to happen that dragged out their recession for so long? I would say it's the failure of that to happen. So, of course, the Japanese um, example is a little bit worrying because they, they, they did some fiscal stimulus and people argue about how much, but they certainly did some fiscal stimulus and they kept at it. Maybe it could be done better, but they, they did the fiscal route. They didn't fix the banks. Now, it wasn't in, Jap in the Japan situation, it wasn't just the banks. It was also the bank's relationship with the company. So they had these so-called zombie companies that really should have been shut down. Uh, a lot of them were way too powerful politically to do that. So the, the companies and the banks were kind of in this together. But there really was um, no um, decisive break uh, with the power uh, with and from and against the power of that elite. And as a result, you, you had a lost decade. It's just amazing how quickly you can lose 10 years of growth. So how do you anticipate this playing out? I mean, we've had one attempted bailout already, misguided as it may have been, misconceived, uh, that, that you would argue is favorable to the banking industry. Now we're going to have another that, that you and many other economists we've talked to think is not going to work. It's not going to sufficiently stabilize it. Or if it does, it's going to be, I mean, I guess there's the argument that it may very well stabilize it, but uh, it's going to come at a high cost to the taxpayers. I mean, do you think that it's actually a chance that it could be effective, even if it's not the best public policy from the taxpayer point of view? Well, that, that, I think that's, that's useful to break it into those two pieces. So, um, you know, if you could, I guess you could make the argument that if this is really the way the credit system gets back on its feet, it's worth an extra 5 or 10% of GDP in terms of final cost to the taxpayer that's, that's increased in, in, in the net debt. Um, personally, I don't think it's going to be particularly effective. Um, I, and I think there's lower cost, uh, better ways to, to, to achieve the same goals. And, and I worry that it, that it won't work at all. I mean, we've been through four or five different iterations of the original Paulson idea. I don't think any of them worked. I don't think any of them were able to sustain uh, political support because they weren't working. Um, so I would worry both about the effectiveness of the reformers as well as the costs of them. Has any country in the current crisis tackled this in a way that uh, would sort of fit with your uh, rest control from the elites from us here? No, no, not yet. Uh, then that one reason is that Europe is, is still in denial. They don't recognize the seriousness of, of their problem. Uh, Gordon Brown has, has 
taken some pretty proactive um, steps into the banking system, but I, I don't yet see a coherent strategy. But the one country that you might say uh, is, is grappling with this, but in, in a totally unpleasant and, and way, and only because they're absolutely forced to, is of course Iceland. Now, Iceland let their banks get uh, supersized relative to the economy. The banks collapsed, the government had to step in, they, na they nationalized, they defaulted, the banks defaulted, and, and then the government uh, nationalized them. Now obviously that's not a model for anyone, that's what happens when you don't deal with the problem, and also you face an economic uh, collapse. Now, I don't think the US is Iceland, but there are some other countries out there uh, particularly countries where the banks do a lot of business in foreign currency, but not just in the domestic currency, which, which do have Icelandic type potential. So looking forward on, say, the unemployment side, um, how much of an impact will, I mean, we've, it seems to me we've got several parallel tracks here. We've got, we've got the credit crunch, um, and that's tied in with the banking collapse, which is affected by and affects also the, the recessionary pressures in the economy at, at large. All of those overlap to one degree or another, but they're not all driven by precisely the same dynamics. So what effect, if any, would you think that a failure of successful bank bailout here have on unemployment, on other things that are perhaps more tangible to, to, to average Americans? Well, I think than, employment than high would, finances. Yeah, so I think that's a great question. I would focus on employment because unemployment depends on, on how many people get discouraged and run out of benefits and, and leave the workforce, I think that's going to be very big. Uh, so I think uh, that we're looking at, um, in, in my view, a substantial loss of jobs uh, dur during, during, during this year. Uh, and if we, um, you know, we could easily have a, a doubling of the, the true unemployment rate, whether or not those people register and get benefits is another matter. But that, that's a very big shock. Um, the, the good news, of course, is the U.S. economy has an increasing demographic that tends to keep growth going. Bad news is if you don't have jobs for these people, uh, as the labor force increases, uh, unemployment uh, goes up uh, substantially. So not turning around the banks, don't get me wrong, I don't think turning around the banks immediately gets you on the path to recovery. I think that requires uh, quite a few steps, the fiscal stimulus, some progress uh, on housing, um, and uh, general, you have to work your way through this general reduction in debt uh, that's going on for households and for, and for firms, and you have to get a bit lucky on the global economy too. Um, but failing to really sort out the banks um, could, could easily hold us back um, o over the next uh, 18 months, three years, five years. Simon Johnson uh, from MIT, we appreciate your time this afternoon. My pleasure.